My name's Rob. I'm the area sales manager from Struis. Um, so today I'm here to run through a few things about the Labapol 20 polishing machine and also some consumables uh, that you've ordered, specifically for graphite and concrete polishing. So I guess first I'll explain a little bit about how the machine works, then some of the features of the machine and the benefits, and then also then move on to the consumables and, and a little bit of some basic troubleshooting information for you as well. Um, so I guess the first thing to know with the machine is the power switch is at the back of the machine. So essentially it's the only switch at the back so you can turn it on and off there. Um, the water, the machine obviously is a polishing machine needs water to run. So water comes directly from the mains pressure. Um, and then I'll show you in a bit when I run the machine how it works, but make sure the mains tap is turned on before using. Uh, and usually turn it off afterwards uh, if it's not in use as well, just in case it bursts. Um, yeah, and then the machine operation uh, is quite simple. Essentially, this Labapol, interfa uh, Labapol interface here is all you need to use. So basically, the machine, uh, basically the left, you know, the water tap is to turn the water on. This is to rotate the machine. Uh, I'll show you in a sec. And this is to turn the wheel on for polishing and then to turn it off. Uh, and this dial here is the RPM of the machine. So to start using the machine, um, you basically this is just a plastic cover that comes off. It is for just to stop dust getting into the machine when it's not in use. The machine then has this kind of plastic ring around it. Now this is what's known as a splash guard. So essentially this is just stops water kind of splashing over the edge, but it's also a little bit larger because it's designed for manual polishing. So um, yeah, so that's there, but I'll take this off just so this is a little bit more visible uh, when I, I guess you turn the machine on and use consumables. So another thing as well, this button here is the emergency stop button. So if you hit this button, uh, I guess I'll show you when it's actually in use. Uh, it basically stops the machine and then you just push it again to kind of get it out of emergency stop. So that's, I guess, yeah, only if you need to stop it in a hurry. Uh, so basically to begin, you, um, to start the machine for polishing, you either, yeah, will place your consumables onto the pad, your polishing disc or uh, SIC foil or pad, and then basically turn the machine on using the green button. It will then start rotating the polishing wheel to the set RPM. So it goes range from 100 to 500 RPM. Uh, and then, um, to essentially start the water running, you press the tap button. And then this dial here on top of the spout is what controls the pressure. So the pressure comes directly from the mains and then this valve here regulates the pressure as, it, as, the, as the wheel spins. So the wheel uh, only spins in one direction, which is anti-clockwise uh, because it's easy, easy to hold that way uh, and polish. Um, and yeah, you just, you just adjust the speed. And then if you do need to stop at an emergency, you just hit this button, it shuts the machine down, and then you kind of rotate it, pop, it pops up, and then it starts. But typically, to stop the machine when you're not, it's not an emergency, just use the red button here on the left. So that's kind of how the machine works. Um, usually after I've finished using the machine, I would um, wipe it down after each step just to minimize contamination. So what I typically do is, uh, start the water and then press this machine here. I'd usually run a cloth over a little bit, turn the water off and then hold this down. It starts to spin really fast and gets rid of most of the water. And then once that's done, I'd sort of usually dry it off with a paper towel and then it's pretty much clean. Now, that's pretty, that's pretty much how to use the machine. So that's very easy. Uh, what I'll show you now are some additional kind of features about this machine that is just interesting to know. So this particular uh, thing here is the MD disc. So it's kind of a heavy magnetic disc. It's the same disc that's on all our polishing machines. So it has basically this cone coupling, this well, coupling here. The machine, the, the, um, the disc just sits on. It doesn't need to be screwed in in any fancy way. Um, it also has this kind of cone shape which helps with stability and also for cleaning. Uh, and this disc itself is magnetic. So it's designed to be used with all our straws, uh, polishing cloths and pads, which are all magnetic foil, uh, aluminum foil backed. 
This then, it then has this plastic guard here. It's just a simple plastic guard, but essentially this is just to keep the machine clean. Um, now something important to note, when you are cleaning the machine, make sure you don't turn the tap on, the water system, when the disc is off, just because it's not good for the water to get inside the coupling area. But generally, yeah, as long as you don't do that, it'll be fine. When the machine's on and the, it's secured, the water will not get into the, the, the uh, I guess, the sensitive area. So, without further ado, I'll start explaining some of the consumables. So generally, with any pot material preparation uh, method, you, you, gotta, you generally look at it in four stages. The first being plain grinding, so that's to grind the sample so that it's nice and flat, but it introduces scratches. The next step is fine grinding, so this removes removing some of these deeper scratches, uh, and then after that is polishing, which removes even the finer scratches. And then the final stage is oxide polishing as well, so using a, a colloidal silica or alumina uh, suspension to um, yeah, basically polish. So starting off with grinding, there are a couple of, due to the nature of um, your research, you dealing with concrete that can vary in hardness uh, and also graphite or carbon materials which vary in hardness. Generally, um, all our methods are kind of derived from two variables being ductility and hardness. So that's kind of how I'll explain uh, the kind of types of uh, methods. Uh, so with the first step, which is grinding, we have a few different types of grinding consumables. The first I'll explain is a diamond pad. So I'll just open it up. It's called the MD Piano 1200. So essentially, oh, actually, no, sorry. This is a 1200 grit. The first step generally for a diamond pad is MD Primo. So what this is, is a special, uh, special diamond disc. So you can see here, it's got the special design. Um, you basically, I'll take it off. Mm. So it looks like that. It's, all our grinding pads have a slight kind of rough backing. The reason is, is that because when you're grinding, uh, there's slightly more pressure on the disc itself and this rough back prevents it from slipping. So you can see that because it's magnetic, it fits on perfectly onto the actual thing. And because also it's uh, their rigid uh, alum aluminum backed grinding pads, you can move them by kind of touching the edges and holding the, them like this, so you, which basically means you don't contaminate the top surface. Now, the diamond pads, whether it's the MD Primo, so this one's specifically for slightly softer, so from 40 to 250 Vickers materials. Uh, this one, every probably, if you use it every day, um, maybe once a week, you, it comes with an aluminum oxide bar here. So essentially to clean it, um, you just basically turn it on and then move it back and forth, maybe for only 15 seconds or so. And then it should, you know, remove any debris or anything and, and also run water while you're doing that cleaning step as well. So that's one of the um, grinding steps. The next step is, uh, the, the other grinding step um, can sometimes involve, it, you can usually with harder materials, uh, you use the diamond pad simply because it's easier to use, it doesn't need to be replaced, um, and it doesn't ever, uh, it remains flat and it doesn't have any resilience in the pad because it's you know, a composite material. Some materials, say if you're softer grades of graphite, you will need to use silicon carbide paper. So Struis has, I guess, a very unique, so I just gotta move in the front, unique uh, system for using silicon carbide. So all the Struis pads come with what's known as, Struis, uh, yeah, consumable for silicon carbide foils, use this gecko pad. What this is, is I'll just remove this, this, guy, this plastic foil here. It's essentially a rubbery red pad and it just fits onto the normal disc as follows. But the nifty thing about this system is it is, instead of, you know, in the olden days, you'd kind of have an aluminium disc like this that's not magnetic, and then you'd hold it, the paper down with a ring. Um, the problem with rings is that if the whole, you know, not the, the silicon, oh, sorry, the silica carbide 
papers don't always stick to the, to the surface and they can kind of bumpy and sometimes mean your samples aren't flat. Whereas with the silicon foils, they're almost like a, I guess the best way to describe it is a reusable adhesive. So all the silicon foils are plastic backs so they don't tear. Um, and then we have all the different grades, but this is a 320, which is the one that you need for your methods. And essentially this rubbery surface, you just put this silicon foil on, pat it down. If there's a little bubble, just move it out, done. So essentially you have a really um, easy surface to start doing some manual grinding on. Uh, and then after, typically silicon carbide foils, after say a minute, maybe two minutes with manual polishing, uh, the utility, the kind of abrasion rate goes down significantly. So typically you want to replace them after a minute of use. Um, and to do that, you basically peel it off and then put another one on. It's as easy as that. Now, the gecko comes with its own cleaning little thing here, which is quite useful. This rubbery side, which it says here for use on the MD Deco, MD Gecko, um, is essentially for cleaning this surface. So when this gets water on it, you just basically turn it around and do this, and then just get rid of the excess water. Because you don't want to have water on this pad when you put this SI foil, the SIC foil on. You want it to be dry. So that's really easy. So the next step after grinding would be fine grinding. So that typically involves either a very fine grade of silicon carbide paper, sort of upwards of 1200 uh, grit to 2000 to 4000. Um, for most of the steps that you use, you, you, you're gonna be using the MD Largo. So what this is, is a composite disc, which has kind of got this green hexagonal pattern. And again, it's an aluminum backed magnetic pad as well. Now this is designed to be used, I guess the advantage of this MD Largo here is that it replaces a number of fine grinding steps. So traditionally you'd go kind of from say, you know, your 220 to your 500, 800, 1000, 1200, 2000. The Largo is designed to replace the 500 to 2000 grit area of grinding in only one step. The other advantage is that it doesn't have any resilience because it's a composite. So there's no, I guess, kind of, you can't kind of compress it at all. So the samples are gonna be much more flat and it can be reused hundreds of times. So this similar just sits on the pad here and it goes, it's to be used with the nine micron Diapro. So Diapro um, is a Struer's, I guess, Struer's all-in-one suspension and lubricant. So what that means is it contains the ideal ratio of diamonds, which are polycrystalline diamonds, so the highest quality, with the ideal ratio of lubricant for this particular pad. So this is 9 micron Allegro Largo. So this is a Largo pad. Now, when you use this, I'd actually suggest getting a little pipette or something because you don't want to pour at risk using too much of the liquid. You really don't need to use a lot of this liquid. Generally, I guess the, it's, the amount that you typically use would be only a few drops per use. Um, and maybe add a drop when you're continually polishing. It would, um, yeah, so, yeah, you generally want to just do a few drops and you can leave it on the pad after you're done. So the first time you use it, you'll probably put, you know, maybe 10, 12 drops on it. Uh, make sure it's not shiny, but not um, kind of too matte. You want it to be slightly glossy, slightly matte. Um, yeah. And then once you've used it once, it actually, you can leave the lubricant on there. The only time you need to clean it is after it gets really gunky and you can't really see any of the grooves anymore because it's too dirty. Uh, so yeah. The next step I'll go through quite quickly. The next step we have for pretty much most, both your methods, you use our, what we call a DAC cloth. So DAC is a woven acetate cloth. In terms of polishing, it's quite a resilient cloth. So it means that it's um, not gonna, I guess, not too soft. And essentially this is to be used, I won't take it out, but it looks like it's a kind of woven fiber. And it's um, to be used with the three micron polishing suspension. So again, the first time you use it, um, and this, these diapros are water-based as well. The first time you use it, you might need to use a few more drops, particularly because it's slightly porous, but after that you can leave the suspension on there. 
Now, if you're looking at two different, very different types of materials, say graphite in particular can be very dirty, and then you might want to look at, you know, polish some metals or other samples on another. Reuse the pads, but use, make sure if the materials kind of make the pads quite dirty, maybe keep one pad for graphite and another pad for um, concrete or metals or something like that. The final step we have is, sorry, probably not good for the shot, is the uh, oxide polishing step. So it goes, yeah. So the oxide polishing step is nearly always done with an MD chem cloth. So it's a black neoprene cloth. It's also, yeah, aluminium foil backed uh, pad. It's typically used with oxide polish. So the OPU is one of the oxide, OPU non dryers, the one we're using here. Now, OPU, non-dry, essentially non-dry means it's got an agent in it which stops it from crystallizing a little bit, which is quite a problem with oxide polishes in general. Uh, before you use an oxide polish, you always need to shake the bottle. And you also want to use slightly more, you know, kind of, I'd say, yeah, I can sort of show you some videos about the quantity, but you generally want the pad to kind of be looking kind of white in color. You don't want to have any dry spots when using oxide polish. Um, now, uh, whereas the diapros, I should have mentioned before, you don't need to shake the diapro bottles. When these diapro bottles are still, they behave like a solid so that diamonds don't fall down. Even after six months, you still won't see any settling of these diamonds. Um, yeah, and so those are the four steps. So yeah, plain grinding, fine grinding, polishing with diamonds, and then polishing with oxide polish. Um, and then, yeah pretty much run through most things, but yeah, if there are any other questions, yeah, I have my details.